Hi everyone and welcome to my tutorial. My name is Emma McMillan and today I'm going to be teaching you how to create a scene in Blender and translate that into an illustration. This process is really useful for quickly experimenting with different perspectives and lighting within the 3D platform to use for your illustration. For this tutorial, I'll be using the free open source tool Blender 2.8 and Adobe Photoshop. I won't be going into much detail on how to use Blender and all of its features, but I will share some of my tips and shortcuts from my process with you. As you can see, I'm currently just blocking in the basic shapes for my scene. I don't need to go into much detail at this point because in the end, all I need is the shapes to capture the perspective, the lighting, and the shadows of my scene. And in my illustration, I will go in with the details. So here I am adding some loop cuts so I can easily morph the shape. If you hit Command R, that's a quick shortcut for doing so. And then I will be adding a subdivision surface modifier, which will smooth out the shape so I don't end up with any harsh lines in the final rendering. Now I'm going to add in the bridge for the scene. I'm making sure to add any object that requires perspective to recreate and will cast any shadows. This will save me a lot of time later on when I'm illustrating because I don't have to think about recreating these aspects of the image when the 3D tool itself can recreate that perfectly. Right now I'm adding the railing for the bridge. Here it seems like I'm adding in too many details considering I'm going to be just illustrating it later on. However, because I'm going to be adding an array to this, which will quickly copy the shape, I decided that it would save me time in the long run just doing the detail once and having it copied over many times. Now I'm using the bevel tool to quickly add in some windows. Like I said before, I don't want to think later on about how the shadows would be. And so just quickly adding in a little divot for the window gives me a sense of depth and scale for these windows. Because I'm going for something more cartoony, I'm not worried about making everything super realistic. I actually want to make all the angles exaggerated and more playful. Here I'm just switching into the rendered view so I can adjust the lighting and the composition. I changed the power of the lighting up quite a bit so that I can really see those dramatic shadows. I also adjust the background slightly just so I can also up that contrast. Here I'm going to go into the output tab where I can change the resolution of the final image to get the aspect ratio I'm looking for. I find adjusting the camera position much easier when you transform based off of the local axis. So if you hit grab G and then the axis you want to move on twice. So for instance, G plus XX and that'll move it off of the local X axis. As you can see, I've just rendered out the image and now I'm going to bring this into Photoshop. For this next part, I'm just going to use the lasso tool to block in the sky. This will also serve as a clipping mask to avoid having any extra pieces coming outside of the house. And here's my laptop struggling to record my screen while also using Photoshop. I often have this problem and I just have to restart my computer and sort it all out. Here I am just continuing to use the lasso tool to block in the main colors of the scene. I'm using a color adjustment layer to be able to color on top while maintaining all of the shadows of the original rendering. I'm not too worried about having the colors super accurate to what I want in the end. I'm going to be going in later on with adjustment layers and color profiling to adjust everything to my liking. Right now, I'm just focused on blocking in the main sections. So for this next bit, there's not so much to say. I'm just going to be making a lot of small adjustments, filling in more of the colors, and there's not really much to it. I am using Kyle's brush set, which is really, really nice for drawing with Photoshop. A lot of the brushes are really unique and have very natural 
qualities to them, which is a lot of fun to work with. So you'll notice here that I skipped ahead a little bit. I realized that I wanted a few more details in the original blend. So I went back into Blender and added some wood trimming onto the barn, I added a door, and then some window panes onto each of the windows. And then I also progressed once I came back into Photoshop to add a few more color changes and some color variations. And now I'm going to start on the details of the image.
Alongside using adjustment layers, I actually like to use color lookup. I found it's a really nice way to help unify all of the colors in my image. Here I'm just using fall colors and warm colors because that's the look I'm going for, but there's a lot of options. And you can also customize this yourself. Then I'm going to add my next favorite thing, which is noise. I always take this into another Photoshop file where I'll add a gray tone and then add the noise filter on top. I make sure to change everything to grayscale so that you don't end up with those color bits. And then I will use the levels tool to adjust the contrast. After I have everything to my liking, I'll just copy and paste this into my image and set the layer type to overlay and the opacity down to around five to 10%. This next step is a little bit more subtle, but I actually find it adds a lot more depth to the image. And that is to adjust the color channel ever so slightly. I do this by duplicating all the layers with Command J or Control J and then merging them with Command E or Control E. And then I double click that new layer and open up the layer styles and I'll only select the red channel in this situation and then Command T, Control T to transform that and adjust ever so slightly to the side. And this will add that slight shift in the color. In this situation, I masked out the center area to keep that part in focus. And that wraps up my tutorial. Here are the before and after pictures. I hope you guys were able to learn a little bit about my process and that you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions at all, feel free to comment below and I'll be sure to answer them. Thanks so much for watching and have a good rest of your day. Bye!